1998, 1999, when the peak of talk shows was happening, everyone who's anyone at a talk show, such as Tony Danza and Pat Sajak. <laughs> also at the same time, there was, um, you know, the biggest talk show there was out there was peaking. It was not only only number one talk show, it was the number one show on television. They had the number one show on television in 44 different countries. It was all the, we all know it as the King of Trash, otherwise known as the Jerry Springer Show. <laughs> Uh, if you've never seen the Jerry Springer show, it's probably because you don't have a television. <laughs> but I'll show you a clip anyhow. <laughs> so you are sleeping with your boyfriend's best friend. Correct. Okay. And your boyfriend doesn't know about that? No. Okay. And you're here, you, you're here to tell him. Okay, he knows he's here to hear something about the relationship from you. He's been outside the studio, so he hasn't heard what's been going on. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> he's your boyfriend. <laughs> Hi, I'm welcome to the show. So we got on Jerry Spring. <laughs> Saw the, the title of the show was Threesome Disasters, which is a typical love triangle gone bad. <laughs> we actually got the Andy and made it a love square. <laughs> Jeff and I, best friends and roommates, were dating Beth and Kelly, best friends and roommates. But we were all sleeping together. I just want to let you know, we always said we would be honest with each other no matter what. Okay. <laughs> I want to let you know that Jeff and I it's about two months ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now we're sleeping together. Poor me, I know. Actually, on the inside, I'm really. The four of us just got an all expenses paid vacation to Chicago. Uh, free hotels, free airfare, free limos. We even got $250 worth of Jerry Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> little piece of the paper with Jerry Springer's face on it that was redeemable at any hotel, gift shop, or restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> now we actually had to work really hard to get a Jerry Springer. For two weeks prior to this, a producer would call us about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning pretty much every single night. And he'd ask us questions such as, what's your girlfriend's birthday? What's your girlfriend's parents' names? Who did you sleep with last night? What kind of protection did you use? Things you would really know if you were in the situation. Then they'd hang up and call the other person to confirm the story. That just means everywhere where we went, we would have to carry two phones with us. <laughs> One for the producers to call us and ask us questions, the other for our friends to call us with the answers. <laughs> now on top of that, moments before we walk out on stage, we had to sign a contract saying that we're telling the truth. And if they catch us lying, they're going to sue us for $80,000. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the cost to produce one show. Basically, they just wanted insurance that they could air it. They didn't want us to go out on stage, busting out laughing, or going to extra hard copy and be like, we made up a story on Springer. I figured between the four of us, we only had $80 combined. <laughs> so we decided to play it serious. Real serious. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Why? Why? What, are you, what is this? Why are you doing that? Well, you know, in the beginning of our relationship, when you slept with my best friend Kelly for the first two months. Okay. I mean, we. <laughs> now, my, my experience backstage was actually pretty eventful. I saw my first transvestite ever. <laughs> She was actually the person responsible for doing my hair and makeup. <laughs> yes, these nasty dreads are my real hair. <laughs> she was also trying to calm my nerves backstage. And the way she did that, she said, Alan, you're going to be so happy you did this. We're going to get so many girls writing in that want to meet you. And I asked her, why was that? And she said, because you look so much like Michael Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> A year and a half, we got that out of our relationship. How can I get that out of our? Oh, I can. That has always been in the bottom of my heart, Alan. You heard me from the very beginning. We talked about this a year ago. It's over. I mean, we we 
we settled it. It was a mistake. I apologized and confessed, and like, I this would just never happen again. Now, best experience backstage was a little bit different. She was in a <laughs> green room with all women. Jerry Springer himself visited their green, green room about three or four times before the show started. For reasons unknown, Jerry Springer never made it back to our green room, <laughs> which was all men. <laughs> you, also, you also notice Beth is wearing her own outfit. She brought these clothes from home. She's actually constantly being hounded to pick out an outfit backstage from the closet, from what, what I like to call the Hoochie Mama closet. <laughs> 15 to 20 of the trashiest dresses you've ever seen. <laughs> she declined successfully their invitation. However, if you watch Jerry Springer to this day, for about a week straight, you'll notice that every single episode, the women wear the same outfits after every, every episode, after every episode. Those, those, uh, those uh, outfits, handpicked from the Hoochie Mama closet. <laughs> Both of us would be honest and like. This, but this wasn't something that was meant to happen. I didn't want to do it to hurt you or anything. It just happened. Oh yeah, it just happens. It just happens to sleep with my best friend. Yeah, okay. Now a question I get asked a lot is, what do my parents think of this? <laughs> <laughs> they were actually happy for me. This is like a goal I set for myself, and I achieved it. I <laughs> a dream come true. I had talked for years about being on Jerry Springer. <laughs> so in a way, my parents were proud of me. They just didn't tell any of their friends to tune in. I mean, the first time we were partying, and she's like a total, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm wrong, but she's a total aggressor. We were partying, you know. She <laughs> you did nothing, Jeff? You did not? No, no, I mean, I'm not. <laughs> Another question I get asked a lot is if they ask me to fight. Now, they didn't actually come out and say those words, but they were close. They said, I don't want you out of your seat with emotion. <laughs> they want you to use the whole stage and be excited. Alan, can I get you another coffee? <laughs> no, you want Coke. Alan, can I get you some more caffeine? <laughs> Jeff and I actually had an agreement on the way to the show that I would try to cry. That if I couldn't cry, I'd run across stage and hit him. <laughs> She was aggressive. I, I, I was wrong. I'm very Alan. I'm so sorry. Oh, I shouldn't have done it. But what's happened? Well, I mean, what's happened has happened. You know. You know, what's going to happen? You moved out. You're my ex-girlfriend. Don't talk to me again. I hate you. six or seven times pretty hard. He told me later that he couldn't feel a thing because his adrenaline was pumping so much. <laughs> Apparently we're convincing enough because the producers made us fly home in separate planes. <laughs> <laughs> now one thing I want to mention is that I felt like a natural reaction would be somewhat hesitant to go on the Jerry Springer show. And so I was, which put the producers in a role of having to convince me to go on the show. The way that they convinced me is they read me a list of 20 possible scenarios that could happen to me. The first ni 19 being which the most horrible, awful things you'd ever want to experience in national television, such as your girlfriend wants to tell you she's really a man, or your girlfriend wants to tell you that she wants a sex change, or your girlfriend's cheating on you. And then like number 20 on the list was your girlfriend will propose to you, which the producers followed up by saying, see Alan, it could be either good or bad. <laughs> Say, someone calls you for Jerry Springer show, it's never going to be good. <laughs> Even if it's a proposal on the Jerry Springer show, I don't think it's someone you really want to marry. <laughs> now, um, Jerry Springer, the show as we know it, back then, spurred reality 